Hi friends! Today we're going to wrap up my most anticipated reads from 2019. Sometime during the first 13 days of the month where I was doing those daily videos, I gave you a list of my most anticipated reads for 2020, but we have not yet wrapped up my most anticipated reads from 2019, which we need to do to see how I did for that. I had a list of 13 books for 2019, and of those 13 books, only 11 of them were actually published. Two of them were pushed back to 2020, and they may or may not have made it onto the 2020 list uh for reasons for reasons so let's get into the list the first book that we're going to talk about is the cruel prince by holly black this is a cover from the fey crate hangover recovery kit box thing i as always am horrible at saying her name but the artist that they use is gabriella bustoso some form of that i have a lot of other artworks buy her through those fake great boxes. I think they're gorgeous. I really love the cover for Queen of Nothing, which you will see soon. So I ended up giving this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved this book. It was so wonderful. The twist ending, Holly and her world that she makes is just amazing. If you want to know full thoughts for any of these, I will be linking my full reviews from Goodreads in the description box below if there are full reviews because sometimes with books that I really love it ends up saying things like I will come back to this after I reread it because I don't have words right now and if I haven't reread it yet that hasn't happened yet. So good luck to all of you and future me who has to link those. Next on the list was On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. This was a follow-up to The Hate You Give though not a direct sequel. It is set in the same world and follows a different character and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. For me while I love this book I love Angie's writing this story just didn't really mesh with me quite as well as The Hate You Give did um, not just because of the diff difference in topics but also just because I wasn't super interested in Star's scene so it didn't really mesh with me completely. However there were some really really beautiful things in this book. I, I don't remember it, the words exactly but I, I think I have it in my review or I've highlighted it. The part where uh, her dad is dead and her mom became addicted and basically said that um, you know when people die they are not the only ones that become ghosts. Basically saying that her mother because of her addiction became like a ghost in the real world. And some really beautiful important things inside this book just as much as there was in The Hate You Give but I didn't connect with this quite as well. And then we have Blood Witch by Susan Dennard. This is the third book in the Witchland series and I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars and no one is surprised by that because I praise these books and Susan continuously on this channel. Love Susan, love these books, love the writing, love the intricate world and the characters and the way all of the characters mesh together and just absolutely love them. Next book was Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassie Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the first book in the Eldest Curses series and it follows Magnus and Alec in between the mortal instruments and the dark artifices. 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 One of those three things. Basically it is a series that follows Alec and Magnus and that's all you need to know because if you are an Alec and Magnus stand like I am then despite the fact that this <laughs> hurts the continuation air, it just brings in a lot of things that don't really necessarily mesh with the other stories that you've gotten. But you know, it's fun. It's a good read. And considering that the fact that in Queen of Shadows, Queen of Air and Darkness, Queen of Air and Darkness, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Air and Darkness, Queen of Nothing, oh my god, why do Holly and Cassie keep doing this? Okay, in The Queen of Air and Darkness, we're introduced into an alternate reality where the characters exist but their world is different. Maybe that's where this book comes from, not that particular world, but maybe they have a multiverse. I don't know, but she introduced it in her own books. Maybe it's a real thing. Maybe this is from a different universe. Could be. 
I don't know. Did I say what I gave this? I don't know. But if I didn't, 4.25 out of 5 stars. Next on the list was Slayer by Kirsten White. This is the first book in this series and it is a continuation of sorts from the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I think that I am one of the few Buffy fans that did that. I think a lot of people that really enjoy Buffy didn't enjoy this quite as much but I also think that people that this is a continuation of the comic book series which went way super left field from what you got from the movie and the TV show, just the TV show. And so I feel like if you watch the TV show and maybe didn't read the comics and then you get into this, you probably won't like it as much. And I haven't read all of the comics. I've read some of them. and I know most of the basic plot line and I don't love the comics. I think they take some really weird creative choices. And that leading into this makes this have some really weird creative choices. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed this book. The next book that we have is Twisted Desire by Jesse Elliott. I don't have that book in physical form, so I shall hold up the first book in the series, which is Twisted Fate. We will discuss Twisted Desire while I hold Twisted Fate. Okay, Twisted Desire is a novella set in this world. It's like a 2.5. It follows two other characters that you see from this world. If you've read the series, there's a, a time skip at the end of the second book and the 2.5 is set in that time skip. I ended up giving it a 4.25 out of 5 stars. If you really enjoy it, I really have enjoyed the series overall. I know that Jesse is continuing to write the series and is writing a new story in the series, so I'm not 100% sure what the new story is about. I believe it's Twisted Devotion. Could be wrong on that. Don't swear to it. But yeah, I really enjoyed the novella of this because I really like the two characters that it followed. The next book is one of the ones that got moved to 2020. It is the third book in the Diabolic series by S.J. Kincaid. I loved this first book and I recently read The Empress which is the second book in the series and the third book is The Nemesis. Here's the thing, when I made my 2019 list I had only read The Diabolic. I had not read The Empress and I have very differing opinions on how I feel about the Empress versus the Diabolic so I don't know how forward I am looking to the Nemesis. However I did really enjoy this. The second book was fairly decent so I do think I will read the third book but I am not making it priority at this point. The next book is one that I have not got to yet and it is The Tyrant's Tomb, the fourth book in The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan. This book came out in September I think and if you were here last year, you kind of know how the second half of my year went and I just didn't get a lot of reading done. So most of the ones that I did read were ones that were published earlier on in the year. The ones that were later in the year I didn't necessarily get to, but this is on my list to try to get to in January. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but it's on the hopeful list. So I am still really excited to get to this and I'm going to try to get to it as soon as I can. In a similar vein is the last one because I believe they came out right around the same time is Capturing the Devil by Carrie Mendescalco. This is the fourth and final book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I have started this one. I'm currently on page 63. I just started it yesterday. I'm really enjoying it so far. I do hope to finish it this week. The next is one that I also did not get to nor have I purchased yet but it is the third book in the Renegade series by Marissa Meyer. The reason why I have not read it yet is because I have not yet read Renegades or Arch Enemies therefore reading the third book would be difficult. I had every intention of getting to this series this year. I really loved Marissa Meyer. I discovered the Lunar Chronicles in 2018. I devoured those. I love them so much. I really wanted to get to this trilogy in 2019 but just again didn't happen but I will be using this in a future video for a try a chapter tag so that may be pushing me to get to this a little sooner but either way need to get to the first two books before I can read the third one. The next book on the list is the other one that did not release in 2019 and that is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. It is the first book in the Last Hour series which takes place after the Infernal Devices series so it's one of the ones that's set in the late 1800s early 1900s and it will be following the children of the characters from the Clockwork Princess Prince Angel series. It was originally slated for release in 2019 and Cassie had some health complications and had to go under surgery and therefore was not able to complete her writing which is totally fine because author's health always comes before publishing a book in my opinion. We're not getting that until early 2020. I think it's February or March. Um, that is on the 2020 list. Um, if you've watched that you will know that because it's already on there. So I'm looking forward to that 
this year as well as what I was last year and I'm super excited for it. Next on the list was The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. This is the second book in the Truly Devious series. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I love this book. I love the series. I really enjoy Maureen's writing which is interesting because I've read other of her works, the um, 13 Little Blue Envelopes, and I had a lot of issues with those books with some of the character choices and just some of the things that happened didn't really work for me. But this series so far I've really enjoyed everything that I've read pretty much so really enjoying this series and I'm actually doing a physical in real life book club book of the first book in the series Truly Devious at my local bookstore next month so excited to get to that excited to continue on with this series the third book in the series is coming out next week and uh, it's on my 2020 list as well earlier I promised you a book cover and now you shall get it the final book on this list the 13th book that actually kind of got added in later because it was a swap for Cassie Clare's book I feel like Cassie's book got pushed back so they moved this one forward and I feel like that may have been not the right thing to do <laughs> the last book on this list is Queen of Nothing by Holly Black again this cover I love what Gabriella did with these with this cover in particular it is gorgeous. I love it. Originally when I read this, again if you don't know this is the third and final book in the Cruel Prince series, the Fair of the Oak series by Holly Black. Like the day after I finished this I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and then after about a week and a half of thinking about it I went back and I knocked it down to a 3.5. I think part of that is because with the rating scale that I have if it's a 4.5 that means I'm rating it five stars on Goodreads and this is not a five star book. It's just not. It's not a five star book. It does not deserve a five star and I think it was my my love of the series as a whole that was kind of forcing me to do that and I feel like this book had a lot of issues and even my rating scale that I feel is kind of foolproof was fooled by this book. I rate my books based off of six different categories and do an average and I feel like that helps me not just give a book a high rating because I enjoyed it but this one just it really fooled the system and I think as I sat on it and was so disappointed by the ending of it it just didn't work for me and I feel like some of that is because it was pushed forward and I think that though they are not the same publisher um Cassie and Holly are separate publishers I feel like when Cassie's book got pushed back Holly's publishers felt like they had a chance to fill in a void and they moved it forward and I think that was a bad decision on their part because I think with another round of edits and some fill because this book is so minuscule as a wrap up to a really epic story I feel like it's missing so much uh, from the final battle especially that it could have done with a little more but that's my opinion I think that's kind of the majority opinion but you know that it is what it is but I will again all of my reviews are linked in the description box below so if you want to check out my full reviews you can find them down there. So that is my wrap up for my most anticipated reads from 2019. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekends and if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future make sure you subscribe and until then I will see you guys next time. Bye!